people get all wigged out about terms and whether you call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit or endued with power from on high or filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you call it. All I know is we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hi, friends. We are going to talk it out today. We have some really great, deep, spiritual things to talk about because we want to know more about who the Holy Spirit is. And this is the place to do it because this is where all of our girlfriends come together. We dig into God's Word. We talk about how it applies to real life, and we don't hold anything back. I've got Aaron Cluley with us, our friend Joyce Meyer. I'm Ginger Stocky, and you are right here with us on the pink couch. Right here. right. That's, that's right the here. spot. It's mm-hmm. really comfy. It is. It's really super cozy. Would you like cozy. me to closer to you? Well, then you're going to be sitting on their lap. Oh, that's true. It we'll leave almost- it be worth redecorating my house to have that pink couch in it. That Isn't it, is I like beautiful. That idea. That's a beautiful couch. It is. But it, I know where we can get you another one. But it really <laughs> would not go in my house. <laughs> Dave likes it, though. Okay. I mean, he's come and he sat on this, and he really yeah. loved it. Yeah, he loves pink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can really see that, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I have the most bizarro story for talking about the Holy Spirit. Oh, good. It's just God works in the most mysterious ways. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be sharing that a little bit. Okay, good. Not just yet. It's Camp. just so strange. What a tease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think a great place to start because there are so many different camps, so many different perceptions and right. things that people think about the Holy Spirit. So let's just start with who is the Holy Spirit? You know, some people. Some people would say, you know, what is the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So, um, Joyce, can <laughs> can you give us a little primer? Well, obviously, we have one God, but He manifests in three persons, and uh, nobody's going to mentally understand the Trinity. So, there's mm-hmm. no point in trying to figure it out. It's something you accept by faith. But the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God. We have God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And for some strange reason, I mean, I, I know what it is. It's the enemy. The Holy Spirit seems to get left out a lot. Hmm. It's like, you know, we hear a lot about the Father and we hear a lot about Jesus. But, I mean, I went to church for years and years, and I mean, I heard the term Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But I don't recall ever hearing a teaching Yeah. It's true. Just on the Holy Spirit are what He does for us in our lives. Mm -hmm. And gosh, it is so important for people to understand. And, you know, people get all wigged out about terms and whether you call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit or endued with power from on high or filled with the Holy Spirit— I don't care what you call it. All I know is we need to be filled with yeah. the Holy Spirit. I think and that's one of the interesting things, too, because somehow, like you said, Satan just loves to dig in there wherever he can. Yeah. And this becomes such a divisive thing among mm-hmm. Christians, too, when, right. when you talk about the Holy Spirit. Well, and a lot of times, the things that the enemy uses to divide us the most are the ones that really are the most important. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes sense. And he makes, you know, he, he you're not going to make a fuss about something that doesn't mm-hmm. matter that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, Jesus said, you'll be better off when I go away. Yeah. Because when I go away, I will yeah. send the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And the reason— That's kind of mind-blowing. It's I like, know. how can we be better off yeah. than— Well, because Jesus was in a body just like we are, and he can only be one place at one time. Mm-hmm. But the Holy Spirit <laughs> can be everywhere. Yeah. He lives in every believer, and Paul encourages us to be filled with the Spirit. And he's talking about, like, daily being filled right. with the Spirit. And he said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And so it's kind of interesting because it's what goes on inside of you mm-hmm that helps you be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be filled with the Holy Spirit thinking judgmental, critical, negative Mm -hmm. comments about everyone. Mm -hmm. So our thoughts have a lot to do 
with being filled with the Spirit. But, I mean, I don't even know how to tell you how important the Holy Spirit is. It's just like I have no words to express it yeah. because he, he gives us the power to mm-hmm. do what we do. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Roman, I mean, in John 14, he's our teacher. He's the one that shows us how to pray when we don't know how to pray as we ought to. He brings us into all truth. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, there's many things that I want to tell you, but you're not ready for them yet. But the Holy Spirit will reveal them to you. The right time he convicts the world of sin, convinces it of righteousness. He he convicts us when we're doing things that are wrong. I mean, he brings things to our remembrance when we need them. Like, you know, you've been in situations and all of a sudden you'll just remember a scripture that, you know, Mm -hmm. you kind of haven't even thought about in a long, long time, and the Holy Spirit does does that. And then there's also Don't you love that as you get older that the Holy Spirit will bring yeah, things to your remembrance? <laughs> or when your kids lose your car keys right. and then you yeah. ask Him for help. I mean, He will right. show you yeah, that's true. where they are. Well, there are <laughs> gifts of the Spirit. One of them is the Word of Knowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're very practical gifts. Yeah. It's not just things to try to impress somebody in church, you know. Oh, here's a Word of Knowledge. There are you... They're mainly for our lives. You have the fruit of the Spirit, and you have the gifts of the Spirit, and we need all of them. Yeah. So you mentioned th- that the church where you were, you weren't hearing a lot about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up in a church where, like you said, we we knew Father, mm-hmm. Son, and Holy Spirit, but I, I didn't know a lot more than that. And mm-hmm. and they gave me such a fantastic, I'm so grateful for that church and where God had me. They yeah. gave me such a fantastic foundation. But there was more that I was craving, and right. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And so I was in my in my 20s somewhere, and I just wanted more of God. Yeah. And I, I knew what other people talked about, and honestly, sometimes it sounded a little crazy to right. me <laughs> because it was so foreign to mm-hmm. me. And honestly, some people that were a little crazy at right. times, you know, sure. <laughs> that's the way it gets sometimes. But the strangest thing happened the way that, that God kind of revealed a little bit to me is the TV station where I was working. We were interviewing and having Metal Ark Lemon as mm-hmm. a guest. Do you know who Metal Ark Lemon mm-hmm. is? The basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah. So he he's one of the Harlem Globetrotters from right. years back. Name? Metal Ark Lemon. I love it. I don't know him. Fabulous. But like, like a trick basketball player. The okay. Harlem Globetrotters, they go right. around and they play fun yeah. games and they do tricks. And so he was one of them. And he was a strong Christian. And he came. So my friend Amy and I were hosting him and I was interviewing him. And so we had like a whole day with Metal Ark. So it's so funny because he taught me how to spin a basketball on my finger. I've got wow. a picture doing that yeah. with him. And he told me a lot about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I learned so much about the Holy Spirit from Metal Ark Limit of all places. And well, I think good. maybe it's because I'm from Indiana and that's God knows basketball is yeah. a part of my life. <laughs> it matters to you a lot. Yeah. And so he was able to use that. But the thing that I also learned from that was... That, you know, I, I learned what I was craving and what I was searching for, that it was available to me, that um, it's part of who we are as believers, right. yeah. and there's more to receive after that. But then, you know, you always want to go back to the Word of God, because not everything He told me was exactly on point. Sure. Right. Like, he, he was talking about learning how saying these words to speak in tongues, and, right. you know, don't don't go there. You don't have to be taught a gift mm-hmm. like that. But anyway. Um, it, but it is a gift that is important for absolutely, people. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but it doesn't go by, read the script, and now no. you're right. But right. interestingly enough, of all the gifts of the Spirit, mm-hmm. that one has caused more trouble yeah. between Christians than any other one. So what does that tell you? So true. I, that it matters. <laughs> it does. I yeah. grew up in a church. Where are you done with your church story? Yeah, go. So I did no, are we done? I know I, <laughs> we're done here. I, are, no, you you done with, are you we're, done with Metal Ark? We are done with Metal Ark, yes. <laughs> I know you, it's cool. Um, I grew up in a church where um, the Holy Spirit was a big part of it, and so it was a, a charismatic church, and we talked a lot about the Holy Spirit. So I saw things that were not seen at my friends' churches, mm-hmm. and I remember taking them to a Pentecostal church when I started college, and they were all Baptists. <laughs> and I, it, w- it was an intense service, and I looked down the row. Were you to trying them. to lose all your friends or what? It's amazing they kept me because they looked at me like with huge eyes, and they were like, what is happening? Yeah. And I said, 
we'll talk when this is over and let me, I'll explain this to you. But so I I grew up knowing those kinds of things and it was familiar, but what I didn't know that I think I've learned so much from you is that not only is the Holy Spirit involved in some, some things like that, but also like in my everyday life, what does the Holy Spirit look like Mm -hmm. on a Tuesday when I'm struggling to be a mom and a wife? Well, that's the most important part. And that's the part I didn't know about. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I was asked to teach in a Bible college that we had at our church on the gifts of the Spirit. And um, at first it kind of concerned me because I didn't always feel like that in a service I operated in Mm -hmm. all those gifts of the Spirit. And what God taught me is they're really mainly for your your everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, they're for they're for us to get words of wisdom from God when we need them and words of knowledge when we need them like you. I mean, I've had the Holy Spirit just show me where things are that I can't yeah, find. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, that happens pretty frequently. Yeah, yeah me too. And, uh, you know, I do speak in tongues, and I thank God for that. Some people don't, and that's mm-hmm. fine too. Mm-hmm. And there's gifts of healings. We can lay hands on the sick for healing and mm-hmm. the working of miracles and to me, one of the most important gifts is the gift of faith. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you an interesting story about that. I think sometimes you have it and you don't know you have it. I mean, when I look back at some of the things I did and some of the things I stepped out into, I mm-hmm. thought, did I have a mind at all? Yeah. I mean, I would have had to have been crazy to have done some of the things that I did. And I just felt like it was what God wanted me to do. And, and so I did it. And and somebody said to me one time, a minister, actually, Don Clower's friend of mine, he said, well, don't you realize, Joyce, that God's given you a gift of faith for this ministry? Mm-hmm. And see, a gift of faith is beyond normal faith. Mm-hmm. It's beyond the faith that saves you. It's, it's a supernatural higher order of faith that God gives you to do things that yeah. you would not ordinarily do. Like, it would not... It would not frighten me at all to stand up in front of three million people and preach. That's amazing. But, you know, I wouldn't want to go into McDonald's and ask for a cup of water if I wasn't going <laughs> to sit in there and eat. And so it's interesting how you, you know, God will give you the faith to do certain things yeah, uh-huh, yeah. that wouldn't even be natural for mm-hmm. you. So the, so the gifts of the Spirit yeah. are very practical, and I'm concerned mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I don't feel like these things are being taught enough these days. Mm-hmm. I think that we've kind of backed off. and We don't people, want to upset anybody. No. People need the supernatural. There's yeah. a part of us that craves the supernatural. You can tell that by everything you see around us. Well, yeah. Because yeah, they're talking about it and right. they're using language that you see in the Bible, but they're missing. Well, my concern is, is if the church doesn't fill that need, the devil will. That's right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I know in my own case... I was so hungry for something, didn't know what, like you, great foundation on faith in my church, loved it, glad I was there, but I wasn't, the supernatural wasn't part of the, of the teaching, mm-hmm. and I worked with a girl that was really heavily into astrology. And she started reading my chart and telling me what days I could get a haircut and this and that and something else. And when I look back on that, I I think because I was hungry and I wasn't getting what I needed Mm -hmm. from my church, the devil was more than happy to step in Mm -hmm. and fill that place. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to teach people about the supernatural in in a sane way. Right. That makes sense. So th- this scripture, I, th- I when I found this, it, it was such a sense of peace for me mm-hmm. because there was a long time that I was wondering, what's wrong with me? Why, why do I not understand this? Why do I not have some of these gifts, different right. things? And Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Uh, that's the wrong scripture. I'm going to read a different scripture. (laughs) Here it is. 
Acts 2, 38 and 39 (laughs) says, Peter replied, (laughs) repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. The Holy Spirit is for everybody. And when I have that relationship with God, when you have that relationship with Christ and he's part of you, the Holy Spirit is part of it because they're one. Mm -hmm. So learning that for me was huge. And then it was the next steps like you're talking about is, okay, how can I understand what what more there is? Mm -hmm. The difference of having the Holy Spirit active in your life and inviting Him to guide and to yeah. be filled by Him to overflowing on a daily basis. You know, the way I explain it, and this is just my way of putting it, makes sense to me, so I hope it makes sense to other people. Obviously, when you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit because they are all one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you, right. you can't get one without the other. And so you do receive the Holy Spirit. But have you surrendered to the Holy Spirit? You know, you can have the Holy Spirit, but not be filled with the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. because that requires a surrender of your life to Him. And so many people, Christian people, they only want to give certain parts of themselves to God. Or they, I say it like this: You want enough of Jesus to stay out of hell, but not enough to live in victory. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I came to a point where I was so dissatisfied with my Christian life as it was. I wasn't seeing victory. I had so many problems from my abusive past, and I was angry and manipulative and controlling, and Dave and I Mm -hmm. argued a lot. And I just came to the end of myself, and I was like, you have to do something. And to be honest, at that point, I didn't care if I got a Baptist miracle, a Lutheran miracle, a Pentecostal miracle. I didn't care. Just take it. And I think sometimes we're just a little too prim and proper to, you know, for the Holy Spirit because he's like the wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that that he's like the wind. You you never know. Mm -hmm. But you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I encourage everybody watching every day when you pray, say, God, fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. And you you read Acts 1.8, which is still a great scripture. And a, a good point to make about that is he said, he didn't say you will do witnessing. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes mm-hmm. upon you, you will be my witnesses. And the interesting thing for me was I was on the evangelism team at my church, and we went out once a week with a group of people and knocked on doors and told people about Jesus. But... I didn't have the power in my life to be a witness Hmm. in my everyday life. I could do witnessing. Hmm. That's really good. As a job. Uh Right. But I couldn't be a witness because I didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit in my life to even help me control my temper. Right. Yeah. That's so good. We could be more fully equipped. Right. To do what God asks us to do. He is fully consuming. Like the way that you describe that, I just keep picturing like... If, if you're filled with something that he's inside of you, he propels you forward. Right. And it gives you that, that push you need to do whatever right. it is that he's calling you to do. And if you, don't, if you aren't inviting that in, then, you, then you're missing that. You don't have that oomph. Yeah. Well, one, one of the questions that a lot of people have is practically what are those benefits? What will, should I feel something? Should I see something? Mm-hmm. You know, how does it work? So we're going to listen to a, a short teaching, a little clip from Joyce, when she talks about the power of the Holy Spirit and some of those benefits that you can see in your life. Well, Philippians two twelve and 13 bring out something that I love. Paul said, therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, So now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I'm absent. Now listen to this. Work out, not work far because salvation is a gift. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own salvation. So what does it mean to have completed salvation? It means that you are to work with the Holy Spirit to work out what God has worked in. See, when you're born again in your spirit, 
everything is just made wonderful. You are, you have all the fruit of the spirit, you're patient, you're kind, you're loving. I mean, everything is good, but it's got to get through your soul. The mind's got to be renewed. The emotions can't control you anymore. Your will has to be turned over to the will of God. And then eventually people in the world who desperately need Jesus can see Jesus through you. But you've got to work, you've got to let this process be worked out with the Holy Spirit. How many of you feel like God's dealing with you about something all the time? Well, he is. And thank God for it. Thank God that he cares enough about you not to leave you alone. I pray, God, don't leave me alone. Just bug me as much as you want to because I want to be like you. I don't want to be left alone and just be a mess. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He guides us into all truth. And you know, I love the fact that the Holy Spirit healed me from the abuse in my childhood. I, I didn't have the money to go to a counselor. Counseling wasn't that popular back when I was having a problem and I'm not against going for counseling. I think God uses that and I think it can be wonderful. But sometimes if you're having a problem and you go to a friend, they don't, they don't really fully understand where you're at right now and they may tell you to do something that you're really not ready for yet. The Holy Spirit knows exactly when to deal with you about what. I think it was Henry Ford who, somebody in one of his car factories was having a problem with some of their equipment and they called him to come in and he was there about five minutes and had it fixed and he left and sent him a bill for $10,000 and they were upset. You were only here five minutes. All you did was tinker around a little bit and you sent a bill for $10,000. He said, the $10,000 bill wasn't for me tinkering, it was for knowing where to tinker. <laughs> and see, the Holy Spirit knows where to tinker and what to leave alone. A woman came to me for counseling and she had just been saved, just maybe, say like the Sunday before. And in the process of talking with her, I found out from the conversation she was living with her boyfriend. And um, so I'm thinking while she's talking, well, I'm gonna need to tell her that she's gotta get out of that relationship. And the Holy Spirit said, no, you ain't, you're not gonna tell her that. I'll tell her when she's ready. See? If I would have told her that right then, she wouldn't have been ready for it, and it might have caused her to turn her back on the whole thing and not go forward. We're always ready to fix everybody right away, and they're not always ready to be fixed. I love that so much, that the Holy Spirit gives us what we don't know right and helps us not to do the wrong things right. to do the right things but but your question was such a good one are you willing to let the holy spirit tinker with you yeah, yeah. you know are you willing to let him guide you <clears throat> you know i've been reading a book i gave you a copy of it too it was like what different evangelicals believed about the holy spirit mm -hmm. oh interesting and uh, it is interesting because yeah. there was a wide yeah, variety of beliefs now they all believed that we needed the Holy Spirit, some believe that you got everything when you were born again. Some, a lot of people believe in what they called a second blessing. And mm -hmm. I've, I'm gonna got a couple of scriptures I want to read in a minute. You know the the disciples were born again and received the Holy Spirit, but then Jesus told them to go wait in the upper room until they received the power from on high. So they mm -hmm. received the Holy Spirit when they were born again, but they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost. And I, I've got scripture to back it up. But in, the, in that book, this is what E.M. Bounds said about how to describe the Holy Spirit. E.M. Bounds said, the anointing is that indefinable, indescribable something which pierces the heart because it comes immediately from the Lord. Some call it unction. 
Anointing gives the words of the preacher point, sharpness, and power and stirs many a dead congregation. It gives him or her directness and simplicity of utterance. Mm. So I'm talking about the anointing because when you have the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that anoints you. And that anointing is literally the presence and the power of God in your life. And, you know, we don't need dead religion. We don't need just a bunch of rules and regulations and, you know, just a bunch of nothing but doctrine. I mean, we, we all need good, sound, solid doctrine, but people need to know how to live. Mm -hmm. They need to know how to get through Monday, Tuesday, how mm -hmm. to raise their kids, how to survive what's going on in the world today. And we need every gift the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. has got. And the Bible says He gives them as He wills. But I believe that we can all experience all the gifts of the Holy Spirit at different times in our life as we need them. Mm -hmm. So so are you saying we don't need to stress out about which one we have no. or are given? No. Because I think I just want to take whatever it is He wants to give me. That's just, up to God. Yeah. He, you know. And, it's, and it says it's for the good and the profit of all. Mm -hmm. Now, when I came into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was back in the 70s when there was a big charismatic outpouring mm -hmm. all across the earth. And I mean, in every denomination, people were being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And to be honest, we were a little crazy. You know, <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like when you're touched with fire for the first time, you can't, can't be quiet. Sure. And uh, I got asked to leave my church that I was in because they said, you're either going to have to be quiet or leave, and being quiet wasn't an option for me, so mm -hmm. I got the left foot of fellowship. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we don't have to be crazy. We don't have to be fanatical. You know, the Holy Spirit should be a normal part of our experience yeah. with God. I mean, you really can't you're not teaching people the whole counsel of the Word of God if you're not teaching them mm -hmm. the importance and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me just give you these two scriptures so I don't forget them. John 20, 21, and 22. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That was the disciples. Now, the same men in Acts 1, 4, and then 5 through 8, it says, And while being in their company and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, You have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but not many days from now, you shall be baptized with and placed in, introduced into the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. So they, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, I believe. Mm -hmm. this is me. I believe that's when they were born again. But then he told those same people to wait to be filled mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time you're born again, but I don't think that's just an assumption that we should make across the board. That there's no more. Yeah. That, a lot, that of, a lot of people, if you noticed, I don't know if you've read any of that book yet or not, but a lot of people called it the second blessing that you, I mean, and some of the great men of God believe that you had to have that second blessing, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. because what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, just so everybody knows, it's, it's given to you for service in the kingdom of God. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit right before God called me to preach. Hmm. It's not just a bunch of little gifts to play around mm -hmm. with or try to impress each other with. It's like yeah. if you're not ready to serve God, yeah. then you don't really need the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because you don't have to be a preacher to serve God. You just need to be a Christian that actually gets out in the world and acts like a Christian. Yeah. You know, my experience was was different in some ways because I didn't have that— moment in the car right. where where everything came down and i i think it was because i was i was searching and and walking different steps yeah. and different paths all along and so i i would see 
more of the Holy Spirit active in my life. And I remember long before anything else, I just, I knew that I had the gift of faith and right. especially for healing. And I, yeah. I could pray for people and see healing in their right. life and just so exciting. Mm -hmm. And yet I felt like maybe something's wrong because I, it, for me, I, I didn't have the gift of speaking in tongues. And this was, you know, when I was in my early 20s. Right. And it's was like, why, God? Do you yeah. not love me yeah. the way you love them? Is there some, what's in me that I need to fix? And I think I just got so wrapped up in it that, yeah. you know, then it was about me and it right. wasn't about God doing anything. Mm -hmm. right. And so God got me at a time where I was just so broken yeah. over a loss that I had in my life, was just on the floor, a crying mess. And the Holy Spirit came in, mm. and I cannot even explain to you the comfort yeah. and the peace. And mm -hmm. I mean, still now, it's just so overwhelming to think about it. And and then, you know, that is when I, I began to speak differently and had that prayer language and things just... It's like God is saying, I don't have to do things the way you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody's I, I know experience better. is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mm -hmm. please want everybody that's watching today to understand that. Yeah. Everybody's experience is different, and you don't you don't necessarily have to feel anything. What you, what you need to watch for is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. you'll, Amen. That's you'll so see, true. You'll see the evidence. You'll see yourself being able to do things that you couldn't. Absolutely. Yeah. It can't be before. just about emotion. Mm -hmm. No, it can't be. And the, the scripture says in Luke eleven thirteen. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts that are of advantage to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask Him? I so continued, I, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. just I'm just really, I mean, I've got myself set, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sharing this a lot in different ways because I'm just very concerned that the Holy Spirit is just being ignored way too much and... Mm -hmm. He is so important in our everyday life. He is. He is. Um, I th I th as I've grown, like out of high school and leaving that church and just becoming a, a wife and a mom, I've I have a new appreciation for what he what he brings to my life. And I I have said that we've said that we've had this conversation with friends who don't know about the Holy Spirit, and so I'll explain to them what my relationship with God is like and how important it is that I can have Him. And as I'm explaining this, I can see their faces and they're like, "What are?" What are you talking about? Yeah, because it, people don't understand what a gift it is to have him and to to be all consumed by him. That so he many leads people you. just go to church. Yeah, and I'm not saying they don't love God. I'm not saying that they're not born again. I'm not saying they won't go to heaven, but they don't have a real deep personal yeah relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember the night I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I bowled on Friday nights, and I was bowling really bad that night. And, you know, after I was filled with the Spirit, I started hearing God speak to me. Mm -hmm. And not verbally out loud, but in my heart. Yeah. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, why don't you ask me to help you bowl? And I thought, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you don't care about anybody's bowling. I'm not going <laughs> to ask you to help me bowl. And But I did, mm -hmm. and I started bowling better. Yeah. And I found out... God cares about everything mm -hmm. that concerns you. Yes. Everything. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised and, you're not on the pro tour now. Yeah. <laughs> she probably could be. She shouldn't have time for it. Yeah. Bowling 300 games <laughs> all the time. Oh, this morning when I did my hair, you know, I wanted my hair to look good for TV. And so I, I prayed that God would help me get my hair curled right. Yeah, and, it worked. Know, yeah. You look great. And it did look. Yeah, see? you look fantastic. <laughs> and so you can, you can pray about anything. You don't have to just yeah. pray for what you think the big things are. God wants yeah. to be part of everything in your life. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those benefits of the Holy Spirit, because it's amazing. Scripture backs all of this. That's the most important thing. He's our strength, and that's in Romans 8, 26. He's our advocate. Mm -hmm. He is there for us all the time. That's yeah. John 14. He's our hope, Romans 5, 5. He's our peace, mm -hmm. Philippians 4, 7. The list goes on and on and on. Right. He's our comforter when we need it. And so... That's a big one. Yes, it is. He's actually called the helper, the parakletos in Greek. That's the comforter and the helper. 
Just think about that. You what a have wonderful thing. The, the Amplified Bible says he's the standby, yeah. which I love that, that the Holy Spirit's just standing by all the time waiting for you to ask for his help. Mm. That's so great. I, I have, I just, I'm going to have to share with what I'm walking through right now. Um, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to tell me not cry because my lashes look really pretty and I don't want them to fall off. You don't want them to fall off. Not, so I'll just <laughs> blink a lot. But I am living out everything you just said. And um, we're going through a really hard family time and we're, our, our loved one is not doing well in their mm. own hospital. And so it's my husband's stepdad. So he's in Oklahoma and I'm here. Mm-hmm. And he said, Aaron, you stay with the kids. Keep it. Let's keep as normal as we possibly can and I'll go. And so all week it's one, a struggle of not being with him to support mm-hmm. him. Two, I love this man who's in the hospital. We don't know what's going to happen. And so I have the most peace. Right. And I, I cannot explain. People keep asking, are you doing okay? Is there anything you need? I mean, I do need a cookie. I told Ginger I, I need a cookie. but We took care of that. Yeah, it was okay. really good. good. <laughs> but I can't explain on the inside. Like It is like I'm wearing a blanket. On the inside, yeah. And yes, I'm sad, and it's hard, and I, and I, don't know the answers. But I do know that anytime I've tried to make a decision this week, like when do I leave, he has given me um, very clearly in my spirit, now is not the time, or right. okay, now it's time to go. And I'm getting answers to things that I don't know how to answer on my own, and I'm getting strength to do this by myself this week while Mike's gone, and I'm sad, and he's my advocate, and. Uh, a verse I read this morning, I think I forgot the reference, but it says, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And I mean, it's real. If, it's Romans 8, 6. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I could count on you to know that. <laughs> no, I don't know them all, but I knew that. You one. knew that was a good one. <laughs> but to be able to know that even in the midst of a terrible circumstance, the Holy Spirit has come because I invited him to, and he's, he's walking my whole family step by step. Well, how many people watching today need comfort? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and we run to people to comfort us. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that that's all well and good, yeah. especially if it's a Christian person that's letting the Holy Spirit work through them. Yeah. We can comfort one another, and we should comfort one another. Actually, what the Scripture says in Corinthians is that we should receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit so we can comfort one another with the comfort we've received from Him. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Yeah, because now I know what it feels like, and I, I have experienced what this is. And so when somebody else is hurting, I, I can know how to show them or point them to this is what right. nobody else can help you. Nobody else can fill that hole or that hurt that you have inside mm-hmm. of you, that pain, but the Holy Spirit can fill that up. So yeah, yeah. I love that verse. Well, Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, mm-hmm. says the Lord. And so we, we really have to learn to lean on and depend on mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. And you know, there was... There was such a marked difference in the disciples after the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Peter, who denied Christ three times Mm -hmm. after the Holy Spirit flooded that upper room, he went out into the streets of Jerusalem and preached so boldly that 3,000 souls were added to the church that one day. So it it gives you courage, it gives you boldness, gives you power, enables you to do things like Saul— says so when the Spirit of the Lord came on him, he was turned into another man. Mm-hmm. And, and that's literally like, I feel sometimes like when I go up on the platform to teach the Word, sometimes when I'm done, I'm like, was that really me? Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I said things I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Was, that, was that really me? Mm-hmm. And so the Holy Spirit really can work through you in a powerful way. Yeah. But it's yeah. all about surrender. You can't run your own life and, hit and let Him run it too. And after you have experiences like we all have, mm-hmm. you realize pretty quickly that running your own life is not as successful as you no. think it will be. And there's you no know? peace in it. Exactly. And and when you see the work of God in your life, when you see the Holy Spirit being active, you want more of it mm-hmm. because it is so yeah. powerful. Right. So now we know that the Holy Spirit is... Active and available for every one of us. Right. Such a key point. We know all the benefits that He can bring to us. Uh, we know about the gifts and how important they are, mm-hmm. how much they can add to what God wants to do in our life. So let me ask about the difference between the the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy good, Spirit. I'm glad you mentioned oh, good that. Question. Well, 
If I had to choose, which thank God I don't, <laughs> but if I had to, the fruit is probably more important because people need to see the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, humility, self-control. Those are the things that when the Holy Spirit comes to live in us, mm -hmm. He brings that fruit with Him, but it comes as a seed. Mm -hmm. And so the Word of God is called the water of the Word. It's really interesting when you put it all together. So a seed has to be watered, and it has to have sunshine. Mm. S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. So time with God, studying the Word, causes that seed then to come into full bloom and to grow up and begin to not only be in your spirit, but start to fill your, your soul. You, you think about loving people. You, you think about mm -hmm. being kind. You think about humility. You, you begin to recognize when you're operating in pride and you know that's not right and you, you want it to be right. And then eventually people will see those things in you and there's nothing, I don't think, that impresses is not the right word, but if, if you want to be a witness to somebody, there's nothing that witnesses to them more than for them to see you change mm -hmm. and, and to see like a mean person become kind mm -hmm. or a proud person become humble. Yeah. And that really, to me, that's the greatest change of all. Mm-hmm. I love what you said in, in the clip we watched earlier when you talked about how, because that could feel really overwhelming. And if this is all new to you, I need to accomplish the whole fruit of the Spirit. That's, that's a lot. But how kindly he is to just like pick a thing at a time. And he's not changing all of you and giving you right. patience and joy and all, all that at the same time. But he's so gentle to say, at least for me, today we're going to work on patience. Yeah. <laughs> and let's just focus on that one thing. And it's not everything has to be figured out at one time because he just... He leads us to each each thing he needs us to. Mm -hmm. We like to work on joy a lot more than we like to work on patience. Mm -hmm. Now it's a fun one. Joy yeah. is fun. <laughs> but we need the patience and the joy we and do. the peace and the self-control. Yeah. All of it. That all of it. Those are things that um that you know I've found that I really have to study in the word to, to help develop those right. those things, those gifts that that God, God has given that that seed of the fruit, like you were talking yep. about, and but we have responsibility to help cultivate that fruit. Gifts are given, but fruit has to be developed. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, one of the things is like e every morning, and I'm so glad it's just a habit now. It's part of part of what happens automatically, almost is before I even lift my head. It's just. You know, good morning, Father. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I need all of you. I need you as a whole. Right. The, so much in my life. And please let let the fruit of the Holy Spirit be strong in yeah. me today. Help me because there are so many ways that that I really, really need that. You know, it's hard right. to say what my mouth would say otherwise. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to even know. think of some of the alternatives. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just making that a daily habit, and and it doesn't guarantee that I'm not going to step in there with some self and make some right. pretty. Yeah pretty egregious mistakes along the way. But I have the benefit of not trying to do it all on my own. Yeah. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My husband is, um, I call him a piddler. He just like, he just, <laughs> it just takes him so long sometimes to do stuff. <laughs> and I was waiting last night for him to, I wanted to go out and sit in a certain chair in the living room and he was going to go up to his office he likes to watch sports it's his man cave up there but he had eaten and he was doing his few dishes and it just took him so <laughs> long to do it and I went out and I'm like when are you going to get out of here and he's like I got to get out of my own house <laughs> and he said you are so impatient and that is probably still my greatest weakness mm -hmm. and I'm not impatient with God I know how to wait on God. I know there's no point in trying to rush him. He's not going to do it any faster than you yeah, want him so to. True. But slow people <laughs> are just hard for me. So yeah. you can all pray for me that I can be really kind to slow people.
You throw me in on that one too. I'll take those prayers, definitely. You two make me walk fast. So <laughs> yeah. we all keep up with you. I move pretty quick. You are fast. <laughs> are are there any things that you would like to to um end this with as an encouragement? Like things that you've seen in your life that that you're just so grateful for the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. or even even a way that you would encourage someone to not be stressed or confused, but yeah. to allow God to do this in their life. Well, one of the things I would say is if you if you don't really know that much about what we're talking about, it would be great if you got a good book. Mm-hmm. And I said a good book mm-hmm. on the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to study. Yeah. You know, I don't want you to be convinced just because we told you. I, study yourself. Look at everything the Bible says about the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And study what Paul says about the gifts of the Spirit in Romans 12, I mean, in 1 Corinthians 12. And, mm-hmm. you know, see for yourself mm-hmm. what it says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Well, as you're walking this out, this is one of the most important things. We've, we've talked all through it, and it's so great to hear other people's experiences because we are so different. To hear how real God is in your life, to hear what the Holy Spirit has in store for you, but that's not enough. You got to start walking into it. And we believe today in Jesus' name that as you pray, as you seek God, He promises you in His Word that as you seek Him, you will find Him when you seek Him with your whole heart. So as you're walking it out today, we have more information for you. We have a list of scriptures, different things that you can get at joycemeyer.org slash talkitout. So much helpful stuff. Um, here's an example, Luke eleven thirteen. If you then who are evil, Joyce read this one earlier, but I think it's so good. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That's a great one. Ask today. And I ask for more every day. I know you guys Hi. do too. We love you all. Thank you so much for being with you, um, for, for being, being with, with us. <laughs> with you. Thank, Thank you for here. being with yourself. Thank you for being with you. Right here. <laughs> yeah, <I'll just> <laughs> no, we appreciate you so much. Don't forget to go to JoyceMeyer.org and watch all the back episodes if you want to see more of Talk It Out. Subscribe wherever you like to get your podcasts, and we will see you here next time to Talk It Out. <laughs>